Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer, and welcome to Lost in the Wasteland, my weekly interview show where I get a better perspective on somebody's perspective on movies. And this time it's my wife, for the third time on here, but the first time is my wife. Right. Exciting. Thank you, Jess, for coming on. I'm contractually obligated to be here. She signed up for a six interview deal. That's it. Once that, I'm out. You'll never see me again. Yep. Be like that. Except she could show up on the other things. But specifically just the interview show. Spoilers, yeah. There you go. You should have read the fine print. There you go. See what you can learn. Always <laughs> read your contracts. And your use of services. That's what he's for. <laughs> but I'm here to interview Jess for my third round here. So let's get things started. So if you had a whole day, Jess, for a movie marathon, what would be the theme of your marathon? Mm -hmm. Let me think about this. Like, I don't have a very small post-it note with scribbled writing on it right here. Hmm. So, um, Shane has known this for years. I've always wanted to... I caught this from someone on the internet. I didn't think of this myself. Uh, have an uncage my heart. Nicholas Cage marathon. And end with his top three favorite films of his. Which are Pig, Bringing Out the Dead. What's the other one? I can't remember. What, my personal three favorites? No, 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 Nick Cage. Oh. Picked out his three favorite performances. Was it Adaptation? Mm-mm. Mandy? Mandy would not be up there. I mean, Mandy would be my pick. Was it Raising Arizona? No, I can't remember what it was, but I remember Pig and Bringing Out the Dead, because when we watched Bringing Out the Dead, I'm like, this is kind of funny. <laughs> he does cage out a lot, but those are the three. Oh, Leaving Las Vegas. Okay, that makes sense. He won his Oscar for it. That's the marathon. He didn't have an Oscar. <laughs> yeah, he won Best Actor for Leaving Las for Vegas. Him. He deserved it. He should have won it for Raising Arizona. Yeah, that was a good one. Hi. <laughs> I know a lot of people who hate that movie. Well, I hate them. So. <laughs> no, you don't. I, mean, I do. Page is one of them. I do not hate them, but the Coen brothers sure do. <laughs> so. Page doesn't like it. You know who loves Raising Arizona? Who? Edgar Wright. Good for him. He thinks it is the most amazing lampooning of American rednecks. <laughs> and that's coming from a British person. Um, I feel like as someone raised as a redneck child, um, I feel like I, I was more endeared to them than, I, I didn't feel like they were lampooned. I thought it was like a celebration of redneck. Or very like. interesting coming from a couple <laughs> very dry-witted Jewish men from Minnesota. You know, so, they're in, in touch with the zeitgeist. Hey, obviously their most personal film is A Serious Man, because that's like the most Jewish thing I think I've ever watched in my whole entire life. And that is a good thing. You have to be a serious man. Um, but my next question, Jess, which I was not surprised about the <laughs> Nick Cage one, um, we obviously have to watch Vampire's Kiss. That's a great film. Beautiful, beautiful now, work. I think he previously had said before Pig that was one of his favorites, too. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, Jess, if you had a friend who had never watched a movie before, what movie would you show them first? I would select Paddington 2 because I hear it's the most perfect film that's ever been put to film. <laughs> and one of the few to make me laugh out loud. I have to say I'm pretty, pretty stoic. Um, um, maybe without the Lexapro, I'll be less, but... <laughs> what I'm going to say is, I'm not going to spoil it, but it has a very interesting connection in Nick Cage, <laughs> linking back to Jess's first answer. But yes, Paddington 2 is indeed the most perfect piece of cinema ever put the screen. So there <laughs> you go. Top the Godfather. Indeed. 100%. And um, I think... The person that gave it its first rotten rating is the worst person in the world. Oh, we should report them. I'm not going to Took away. It's 100%. Now, if you could pick one film to get a sequel, because I know a lot of people hate sequels, but if you think of one movie that deserves a sequel, what is it? Um, wasn't Dread supposed to get a sequel? Uh, like, that was my pick. Uh, I, like, I really enjoyed Dread. We still I, have not I gotten felt a Dread like it sequel. was supposed to, and when I thought of this question first, I was like, ugh, sequels. And then I thought, no, I feel like there were some movies that were supposed to get them that I was, like, I, fine with. Dread bombed Dread is up there. at the box office. 
So that's 100% why I didn't get one. But it deserved one. And I can guarantee you Carl Urban would still be down. He's everyone's favorite Australian action movie star besides... It's Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. And some people probably could know Gibson. And then. He was born here. He's a New Yorker. Um, so, um, but in terms of recently, Carl Urban responded to everybody being like, he should be Wolverine. Mm. And he's like, I think that would defeat the purpose of Hugh Jackman retiring. I'm two years younger than him. <laughs> so, interesting thought, though, if you think about it that way, because I wouldn't have guessed that they were that close in age. I wouldn't either. But there you go. They both made their big splashes in movies around 2000, 2001 with X-Men and Lord of the Rings. People age differently. There you go. Carl Urban's still doing great for himself with the boys and stuff like that, so I think he's fine. We're happy for Carl Urban. Now, what is a film from your childhood which you haven't watched in a long time that you'd be interested in returning to? Um, I, you know that I hate rewatching movies from my childhood because they're always, like, <laughs> not great. problematic. <laughs> Um, we recently did watch Juno again, though. I guess, when did that come out? 2006? God. Well, I'm, I'm thinking more, like, when you were a kid, and less of, like, mm. when you were a teenager. So, like, what's, like, one of those movies that you watched as, like, when you were a child that you would watch all the time, but you haven't watched in years, so you're like, I should watch that. I... I had a pretty diverse Disney rotation. There weren't a lot that I, like, obsessively rewatched. Um, well, now you're getting stuck on the details, Jess. Just pick something from your childhood. <laughs> um, we were raised as Luddites and didn't have a TV. Um, <laughs> I guess I haven't seen... What did you put on your note? In a ma <laughs> I put nothing... Look, it says none because I want my memory pure. Okay. That's what it says. I know you can't really read it because it's in cursive. It's funny because I'm working on a little project that might become something more than just me doing this for my own my pleasure. Real, my real answer would probably be um, an American tale. See, I was actually going to bring that up because all those Don Bluth... Yeah, all the Don Bluth movies. Like, I haven't watched American Tale, um, All Dogs Go to Heaven, mm. Rock-A-Doodle... I never saw Rock and Doodle. Um, Troll in Central Park. I never watched that. Or it's spin off Troll in Central Park. There, you got it. You just got a Richard Jewell reference <laughs> right there. I said it because Jess would appreciate it. I or would. would get it and then judge me for it. <laughs> um, but, like, those Don Bluth movies, like, I haven't watched in years. I remember renting Troll in Central Park from Wow Video. <laughs> I don't remember picking movies when I was a kid. My mom was more like, let's go see it. And I said, okay. Uh, oh, when I was 13 years old, I wish I got to pick the movie that I went to go see with my aunt and my brother. <laughs> but Ethan and I wouldn't agree. I wanted Shrek 2. He <laughs> wanted White Chicks. And then we saw The Terminal. <laughs> which was like, what not what a 13-year-old boy wanted to go see. <laughs> Definitely I wanted Shrek 2. <laughs> and I was right. Because, <laughs> like, that, Shrek, Shrek 2 choices, is, like, would... by far the best movie out of the three of them. Um, yeah, the only movie I remember seeing in theaters is Mulan, because I would, would, it's the second time seeing it. I think I told the story before. I made my aunt read the theater. Even though I had seen it before and I knew what happened, I don't know. Just couldn't take it, Jess. <laughs> now, if you could visit one place from a movie, where would you go? It could be fictional or it could be real. Okay, so I chose the... Are you trying to read my scribbly handwriting? Maybe a little. Shane, I don't think, can actually read cursive. So that's why I wrote it in cursive. I can read cursive. I just can't <laughs> oh. write in cursive. Or, like, I can't casually oh. write cursive. I would have to, like, you don't have actively to. try to look up letters and stuff like that. Oh, you don't have to. But continue. The, um, I was really into the underground world of John Wick. Mmm. Um... So, you would be an assassin? I w I'd definitely not be an assassin. I can barely walk down what, the side of stairs. What kind I would of character definitely would be like be the then? concierge or whatever. I'm pretty good at talking to people well, and making connections. To be fair, he also lights up some Yeah, people. but like, but that's not his primary purpose. 
<laughs> I'm not saying I would be him. I'm just saying I would be that kind of support role. I, I was waiting for you to be like you would be J uh, um, Jason Monswakis <laughs> from the, the Bowery. Who <laughs> just I like... Mean, that's tick a fine tock, role Mr. Wick. <laughs> tick tock. Could be the guy with the pigeons. It's a pretty good one. Jess, Jess is going to be the Bowery King. <laughs> there you go. Jess is obviously Lawrence Fishburne. We have a lot in common. Good old, <laughs> Larry, good old Larry, Larry Fishburne. <laughs> now, what film did you watch way too young? Uh, definitely Jurassic Park. I've told you this story before. I've probably told this story. I was absolutely terrified. I saw it the year after it came out because it was on TV. Um, and I just even caught a glimpse of it on TV. It was just hiding under my blanket, which was bigger well, than like if you could three. remember. So like that. Yeah. Well, I was at I was at Eno's house, so I had to be at least five. So I guess it wasn't the year. I guess it was like. Well, to be fair, back after. then that probably still would have been in theaters a year later. Because mm. well, that I, that that was, that was the state of movies then. I'm gonna say circa 1996. Okay. I remember seeing Lost World Jurassic Park and being told we were watching Mouse Hunt. <laughs> And then the little girl gets attacked by little dinosaurs at the beginning, and I ran out of the house. Aww. Thanks, Ethan. That's so sad. Ethan. But yes, I can understand that. You miss out on so much not having siblings. So sad. I would miss out on having a sibling, though. That's true. Now, what film experience, Jess, do you feel like legitimately has made an impact on your life? Mulan gave me anxiety. No, that's, I'm definitely had anxiety. That, that is where Jess's anxiety was. <laughs> it was born, my watching birth rate, Mulan. probably. Um, no, I put Belfast. Or I should, don't, shouldn't put Belfast. Belfast, because I'm pretty sure I came out of the theater and started crying. And Chin's like, "What a beautiful movie, right?" Or something like that. I'm like, "I need to quit my job." He was like, "Okay." <laughs> Um, that was the that was the most packed theater I, during COVID, except for Spider Man. <laughs> I tend to be pretty like. reserved, reserved with my feelings, hashtag just Aquarius things, um, mm. but I, that was like a release, um, and I did, I switched jobs, I'm still at the same company, but I switched jobs, so, su success, question mark? There you go, hashtag doesn't really believe in astrology, <laughs> but does really believe in astrology. Whatever, Shane, it's <laughs> fun, I still love that person that said astrology is sports for... <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Now, Jess, what is a movie you would like to see turned into a TV series? Um, I put Paddington. Because isn't that a series of books? Yes. And it's very wholesome. I put Paddington. That'd be like my favorite show on television. He's so cute. Do you think we would get the return of Phoenix Buchanan? I hope so. Oh my god. The it's great. going to be his favorite role, right? He's I like has really to come on. Except maybe Love Actually. Uh, he hams it up there, too. Oh. But he was younger. The grant <laughs> He's really having, like, a... Between that and Fletcher from The Gentleman, yeah. come play with me, Raymond. He really is hammy. <laughs> yep. He only takes hammy roles now. Please don't has, cast Hugh Grant in anything that's not a hammy role. He did play a can leader of a cannibal cult of, like, savages in Cloud Atlas. I specifically didn't see that, so, you know... Well, he if also you played cast the, him in a serious role, I won't see the movie. He also played the jerk older brother of Jim Broadbent in one of the storylines who gets him locked in a nursing home mm. for sleeping with his wife. But then, the more you think about it, I guess Jim Broadbent had that coming. He did sleep with Hugh Grant's wife. <laughs> so, <Okay. laughs> you sleep with my wife, I get you stuck you're, in a nursing you're home. You're first, folks. Equal. That's a fair trade, right? What happens to the wife? She just gets off scot-free. I think they're still together. Oh. Yeah. There you go. Old white people things. Or old white person and slightly younger white person made up to look like an old white person. Oh my god, Kenny Valley idea. Well, no, Hugh Grant was just made to look like an 80-year-old. See? Um, now, Jess, what is your favorite film romance? Um, I had to think about this, because I'm not really one for romantic movies. Yeah, he's shaking his head. Um, I put Wesley and Buttercup. It's classic. It's pure. It's As sexy. you wish. It's timeless. Wesley! Got that, Yeet! That little boy liked it. <laughs> 
just throw herself off the hillside and roll down. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's the only reaction when you've shamed yourself. So rude. See, I can't recognize faces, so I would have known immediately who it was. God, now all the quotes are just rushing into my head, and I think the one that stuck out the most was like, Good God, what is that thing? <laughs> <laughs> You'll be so disgusting looking that children will look at you. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. Him. Wesley and Buttercup are great. Because the thing is, I I know how much you love forgetting Sarah Marshall, but to be I do. fair, I, mean, they don't I don't focus really on think. I don't really, like, that this knows. might be a hot take or whatever. Probably not, because, like, who thinks this much into forgetting Sarah Marshall, honestly? Is, That's because I've seen don't really, 15 times. Yeah, I don't really think. Like, I don't love the relationship between Jason Siegel and Mila Kunis. It's just funny. It's it's so far where he's like, she's having an orgasm. <laughs> I feel like I love the energy mm -hmm. and that he has somebody, but like I don't really care about them in particular. Well and then it ends up not really working out. But then she comes to you know and sees don't him do naked. They, don't they? Mm -hmm. We got a naked before. Jason Siegel sandwich. <laughs> once at the beginning, once at the end. <laughs> But yes, Wesley, oh, right. Wesley and Buttercup are a tale as old as time. Beautiful. And that one didn't involve, well, he did kidnap her slightly for mm. a short period of time. Mm, I was about to say without Stockholm Syndrome, <laughs> like Beauty and the Beast, but I guess... I mean, he was rescuing her from being murdered. And acting all tough and abusive, yeah. but then <laughs> the second she found out it was Wesley, she's like... <gasps> Yeah, I would be mad at that. I'd be like, you fucking... Yeah, th you know what? Yeah, they don't really... She goes straight from, like, you're a disgusting human being like, oh, my Wesley! Well, the and then let me throw love. myself off of a hill for you. The line between love and hate is very thin. Fair. But now, my last question for you, Jess, is... Theoretically, you get hired to teach a film class. Who would ever make that mistake? What would you... Uh, it's like in film... Uh, what would be your film curriculum? Alright, I spent um, 10 minutes today when I probably should have been working and I put one together. <laughs> uh, so my theme is Westerns Through Time. Ooh. Um, so I have, sorry I wrote extremely small, I'm going to have to pick this up. Um, start with things like, I have Stagecoach, and then High Noon, and Searchers, mm -hmm. so stuff like that from that like part. How and then dare you also, with uh that all-American sandwich with communism in the middle. I was going to say, maybe not in this order, but Treasure of Sierra Madre is in there, too. I feel like people don't often think of that as a Western, but when I looked it up, it technically is, so I was yeah. like, I'm taking this. All right, yeah. Humphrey um, Bogart. Because my whole point with this is to broaden one's horizon. It's just not John Wayne. Um, no, I... No, there's Clint Eastwood. Let me finish. Well, I'm saying it's not just the two of oh, them. No, it's not. Mine is way more Eastwood heavy than John Wayne, because you know that I think he's a massive dick. And by I think, I mean I think it's pretty well established that he was just a... There you go. Douche. Um, okay, so I had some classics mixed in there, like Once Upon a Time in the West. Um, just fuck my students. They can invest, what is it, three hours and 15 minutes or something? Whatever. Or is that how the West was one? They're both pretty long. The, what, uh, what's upon a time in the West is three hours. Yeah, so um, then I have the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's a classic. And then I kind of neglected the 80s a little bit. I'm sorry. The 80s. Um, you had a, It was a weird time in cinema. I think in terms Hail of, Rider. I think in terms of, yeah. It was a lot of Eastwood stuff. Hail Rider. Because even like Outlaw Josie Wales was in the 70s. Mm -hmm. um, and so was High Plains Drifter. I feel like he was due... Ugh. There was a Butch Cassidy and Sundance because it was still 70s, right? 60s. 60s? Yeah. Um, I feel like... Silverado! There was a, there was a show. Yeah, Silverado <laughs> was what I was trying to think of. There's another How, one, too. Get that Lawrence Kasdan in there. Um, but then I had a jump forward a little bit to Unforgiven. Um, and then I put in Brokeback Mountain and No Country for Old Men. And then yes. True Grit. Got the neo western. Um, Django, I threw in there. Just have something, shake it up a little bit. Different take on westerns. The Django. And then Hell or High Water was what I ended on. Mm. Um, Runner you got like Slow West. I really enjoyed Slow West a lot. You got like the two best neo westerns. 
Hell or High Water and No Country for Old Men. Um, you got the Coen Brothers and Taylor Sheridan. So yeah, the Rover was a a runner up for something to shake it up to because it's an Australian. What was it? So what I guess it's a, a neo meat pie western. Meat pie. Yeah, because it's post-apocalyptic. So they call, uh, so apparently Australian westerns are meat pie westerns. Uh, like, um... Makes sense. The Proposition. I did eat a meat pie in Australia. Which I'm sure they love their meat sexual, pies. sexual, but it's not. They had a lot of varieties of them. I am looking forward to talking to you about some of these westerns in the future. On your three other interview deal. Now, Jess. Well, you can save this for me, then. Those are all of my questions for you. Mm. So you get to ask me mm. a question. So what would you like to ask the Wasteland reviewer? First of all, how dare you? Expected that. Um, I probably said it last time, too. I'm pretty predictable. <laughs> I completely disregarded the fact that it said 11. Wild card. So now I legitimately have to think of one. What are you most looking forward to that's coming out in the next month? The next month. Yes. Thor, Love, and Thunder. I bitched out with that question. That's a really easy one. Already. Because. <laughs> why not? Time is weird. God. That's coming out already. That comes out on July 7th. Excuse I think. me. But there are some other ones out there. I'm really excited for. Um, it starts crashing me. Official competition. That new Penelope Cruz and Antonio Banderas oh, movie. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Um, I like Penelope Cruz. Elvis, definitely. Guillermo del Toro's favorite. Yes, Guillermo Maybe del Toro is think? actually a big fan of this movie, so there you go. Baz Luhrmann did good. Baz. Baz. Is it Baz? It's not Boz. I don't know. No. Um, some of the things I would like to throw some shout-outs to, so check out Mad God when it comes out and... Um, will already be out by the time this is actually posted. So, it'll be on Shudder. It's a crazy stop-motion, like, dystopian, just fantasy. Marcel, the shell with shoes on, also coming out. And, no, I don't care about Minions. <laughs> you should care about it for the Diana Ross team and Bala mashup. Oh, my. But that's my, definitely Thor Love and Thunder, and we'll be seeing it opening night. Because we have to. Because we're going to be gone that whole entire weekend in Cape May. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we you do actually have to... to watch the cats. We do actually have to watch, watch it Thursday night. Who know us, not just random people. Yes, and God, I cannot wait to see that movie in motion. I, I'm a huge fan of Russell Crowe, and I heard Chris Hemsworth say, like, don't be fooled. He is such an intense actor. He's going to sing. And it's absolutely amazing to watch him perform. And basically Taika Waititi was just throwing all the weirdest shit at him. And he's like, great, I'll do it. Oh, he's an Australian actor we didn't think of. Yeah. That's right. God, Russell Crowe, amazing Australian actor. Arguably the best Australian actor. How can you say that when Nicole Kidman accosts you every time you go to an AMC theater? On that note, um, I wish that I never had to watch that Nicole Kidman ad in an AMC ever again. But I don't get my wish because I have to watch it every single one the rest if of we, 2022. If we paid her more money, do you think she would... I mean, I'm just, this is a hypothetical. If we had more money, do you think she would be like, I hate AMC? <laughs> and they'd pull the ad. <laughs> but anyway, just thank you for coming on. You're welcome. Would you like to shamelessly plug anything? No. I have nothing going on in my life beyond you. <laughs> and thank all of you out there for always tuning in and supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.